Father, we just humbly come to you, Lord. We just thank you. I thank you for a divine appointment today. Lord, I just thank you, Father, that people are not here to hear a man speak. Father, although they are here to hear a man speak, but they're here to have an encounter with you. Yes. And Lord, I pray that you meet us where we're at today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you give me every word because people, people are, are desperate today. People need to know what's going on. People need hope. People need to, re, to be reminded that you love them. Yeah. People need to, to find their identity today, Father. And I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would just meet everyone where they're at through this message, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So we've been talking for uh, this month about overcoming fear, and uh, it's been powerful. Who's been here the last couple of weeks? How have you guys? Have you guys been blessed by the message the last couple of weeks? If you haven't been here, check it out on YouTube. We have our YouTube, which, 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 is, which is amazing because you have an opportunity to review and kind of check it out. But every single week, God has just been meeting us here. And so this month, we're going into talking about fear. So today, I want to talk to you guys about something that is going to take what we're doing to the next level. Um, many of us are in here today, and we're, we're, we're in this place. It's like... We don't want to go back to, to where we were. You know, we don't want to go back to the old man. Um, but a lot of us are in this place because we're not able to move forward into the things that God has called us to do. So I'm going to break it down. You have an old man. Okay? The old man is, is the old you. The old man wants to, to run your life. The old man wants to, you know, the old man is what you, who you grew up with and what you grew up with. The old man is the, the old mindset, the old, the old ways that you were thinking, the old ways you were doing things, right? And then there's a, new, there's a new you. There's a new you that God has called you to be, and it's on this side. But many of us, because of fear, everyone say fear. fear. Many of us, because of fear, because of the things that we've done, the things that we've done, the mistakes that we've made, you know, it's like, God, I keep blowing it and blowing it and blowing it. It, it, it brings us to this place, and I call this place the middle. Everyone say the middle. The middle is that place where it's like, I can't really go to the next level, God. It's something that just keeps bringing me back to this place. Sometimes I feel stuck because I feel unworthy. It's like, I know, I, I, I know you, God. I believe in you, God. I know that you're with me. I, know, I even know your word. Maybe I've been in church for a while. I, I've heard all these things, but there's something that just keeps me in this place in the middle. And it's because of fear. It's because of the shame. It's because of the disappointment. But let me tell you this, it's gonna to break today. It's gonna to break today. Getting, we're getting out of the middle today, okay? We're getting out of the middle today. God is saying, it's time, my son. It's time, my daughter, to go into the place that I've called you to be because I'm gonna free you today, says the Lord. Because there's one thing that keeps you stuck in the middle. One thing that keeps you stuck in the middle. One thing that allows you to be pushed and dominated by fear, and that is identity. Everyone say identity. Identity, identity the definition of, of, of identity just simply means is it's who a person is. It is who you are. It is your existence. And we see what happens to people, if you've ever met anybody that's, that's suffered from an illness or suffer, suffered from something that has happened to them where they lose their memory. They lose their memory. They, 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 they forget who they are. And, and it, it's an unfortunate disease that, you know, it's pervasive in, 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 in our world today where people suffer from Alzheimer's and dementia and all these different things, right? But what happens to them is that when they begin to lose their memory, they're not able to progress forward. They, they become stuck in the same place. They begin to recall the things from their past. They, 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 they can't move forward because they're stuck in this place because they forgot who they were. Now, many of us are going through the same thing, but spiritually, because we don't know who we are. We don't know who God is calling us to be. Because when you know who, when, when, when you know who he is, you begin to know who you are. And so God in this season is saying, son, daughter, you don't know who you are because you don't know everything about who I am. Because I'm going to be showing you great and mighty things. Because when, when I'm telling you, when you understand whose you are, you're going to understand who you are. And, and you don't have to understand everything about God, but, but God is saying that I am the King of Kings. I am the Lord of Lords, and, and I, I am so powerful. I can blow your mind, and, and above all of that, I love you more than you can ever hope, think, or imagine. Can you imagine being loved by the most powerful being in the universe? He loves you more than you can ever hope, think, or imagine. You are a son. You are a daughter of the Most High God. That's who you are. 
You are a king's kid. I guarantee you, I'm telling you the truth. If you don't receive that, if you don't understand, don't, it's okay because today we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get some things um, solidified today. You guys ready for that? Amen. If you've been ready and you've been ready, and it's like, Lord, I, I, I see this and I see that, but it's my past that keeps me in the middle. In the middle. I'm going to say the middle. It keeps me in the middle. You can go to Proverbs 28, verse 1. So it says, the wicked flee, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Okay, we're going to look at this again. Then we're going to break this down. Okay, we're going to break this down so we understand what this scripture is talking about. Okay. The wicked will flee. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked, everyone say wicked. wicked. And there's other word, everyone say righteous. righteous. You know, growing up, I always thought that this was about how, you know, this was about our performance. This was about, you know, all the mistakes that I would make and everything. And when I was a kid, if those of you, who, anybody know me as a kid, I know my, my dad is here. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was always in trouble. <laughs> okay, I was always in trouble. I was always getting in trouble, not like juvenile, like going to jail trouble, but I was just bad. Okay, I was just bad. I was bad at church. I was bad at school. I was bad in all my classes. I was, I was the bad kid in all my classes, right? And so when, as growing up, because I was always in trouble, I didn't realize this, but this is how I looked at God. I looked at God like I was always in trouble. Like, I was always in trouble. Like, he was always mad at me. Like, like I, I could never live up to, to pleasing him because I did something wrong again. I did something wrong again. And because I did something wrong again, I could never expect God's best. I can never really pray to him because I'm like, I, I don't deserve it because of all the way. You, you see how I live, God. You, you, there's no way you're going to answer anything that I bring to you. There's no way you want anything to do with me because of my lifestyle, because of the, the decisions and things that I've made. And one day God showed up to me. One day I had an encounter with God and he said, son, I love you because you're mine. I love you because you're mine. And so many of us today, we live in this mindset. So wicked and righteous represent two different identities, okay? Two different identities. Wicked has nothing to do in this with being immoral. Wicked has nothing to, with this with being bad or sinister or evil. Wicked is an identity. You can have a wicked identity. You can always think you're in trouble. You can always think God is mad at you. You can always think you're not good enough. You can always think you're unworthy. And what happens when you think you're unworthy? What happens when you think you're not good enough? What you gonna do? You're gonna flee. You're going to run from God's presence. Anything that has to do with church is like, <laughs> be the next week. <laughs> you know, anything about the Bible is like, I don't want to go near the Bible. It's just going to make me feel bad. It's just going to tell me all the things I'm doing wrong, right? Anything that has to do with anything with God, it's like, I'm not ready to pray. I'm not ready to spend time with God because, because I'm not comfortable, because I'm unworthy, because I'm in trouble. Because if I come to God, God's going to tell me all the things that I've ever done wrong. And because of that, I flee. I flee from anything with God. I flee from intimacy in my relationships. I flee to get close to people. I flee to connect because there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. And what I'm telling my friends and family is that you're not a bad person, but you're living in a wicked identity. All right. It's a wicked mindset that makes you feel like you don't deserve because of your works, because of your performance. But let's break it down. What does righteous mean? It says, but the righteous are bold as a lion. But what is righteousness? I always thought righteousness was like, you know, like perfect, like, you know, like, you know, pure and just holy and just, you know, blameless. And so for me, I'm like, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. You know, who's ever called himself a sinner? You ever called himself a sinner? I'm a sinner, God. I'm the best of them. I teach people how to sin. Okay? I, that's what I did. I taught people how to sin and I encourage people to sin. You know, I led the party for people to sin. And so it's, it's just crazy. I'm a pastor. It's just, it's, it blows my mind, right? God is God is, so funny. I love it. People from college are like, you a pastor now? <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, God is good. God is good. But righteous simply means right standing. It means being in right standing with Jesus. Right standing with God. That's what righteousness means. It has nothing to do with your performance. Let me give you this example. I heard this a few years ago. Let me give you this example, okay? Let's say you live in an apartment, okay? You're in an apartment and you haven't paid, you haven't paid rent in three months. 
you haven't paid rent in three months. So you avoid your landlord because you know if he sees you, they're gonna have that talk and he's probably, probably going to evict you and he's probably gonna kick you out or whatever. So you avoid the landlord at all cost. But if we go inside your apartment, okay, which represents your heart, if we go inside your apartment, okay, you have a lot of issues going on. Okay, you got a, got a hole in the ceiling. You know, it's like leaking every time it rains. The, 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 the toilet's not working. The air conditioning thing broke. The sink is having tr problem, problems. And all this can be fixed, but because you haven't paid rent in three months, you're in debt. And because you're in debt, there's no way that you can approach the landlord because of this debt. So you have to avoid the landlord and live with the problems. You have to live with the issues. You have to go through life being in bondage because you're in debt. And if you're in debt, then I can never ask for the things to get repaired in this house. And we live our lives right. being in debt. We live our lives feeling like there's something wrong with us. There's something the matter with us. And we can never approach God because, oh, I only pray to you when I, when I, when I want something. And I don't even really want to do that. You know, you, we, we have all this guilt, all this condemnation. But let's just say one day the landlord's son hears about your situation, right? You get a knock at the door. You come to the door. You open the door up. And it's the landlord's son. And he says, hey, I heard about what's been happening with you. Listen. I want to let you know that I'm going to take care of the rent that you owe. I'm going to take care of the three months, okay? I heard about your situation and, it's bro and it breaks my heart, okay? But I have some even better news. Not only am I going to take care of the rent for the last three months, I've already spoken to my father, you're going to live here free. Free. Don't ever have to worry about paying anything ever again because I, I paid it. I told him that I'm taking care of it, and I, I told him he doesn't have to worry about any money coming from you. He's going to come to me for all the money, for all the transactions. I paid it. Okay? Don't worry. Everything that you need in this house, everything you need fixing, I'm going to do it. Okay? Anything else that happens, you let me know. As soon as it happens, let me know. As soon as you're going through anything, let me know because it's taken care of. Okay? But just let me know. Okay? And that's what Jesus is saying to you. That's what happened in the spiritual realm. Yeah. He went to the Father and he said, send me, Father, send me, send me. Let me redeem my people. And John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so he sent Jesus to take your place on the cross. Look at this scripture right here. If you don't believe me, look at this scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us that we might become the we got to say a little louder. The? You better celebrate. You are righteous. You are righteous. You better celebrate. You better celebrate. This is a great thing. This is a game changer for your life to know that you are righteous. You are righteous. You need to celebrate. I don't care what you've done. When you receive, let me say, let's go back to, 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 to the Proverbs scripture. When you, when you receive righteousness, the wicked flee what no one pursues, but the righteous. What happens when you know that you are righteous? You become what? Bold. You become bold. I can stand here today and be bold, not because, oh, I had just the greatest week and I didn't like say anything stupid to my wife this week. And <laughs> no, I did. Okay. I did. I'm not here today. I didn't cuss this week. I did cuss this week. Okay. One day in particular, a lot. Okay. I did. And I'm free to say that I did because I'm not performing. I'm not working for nobody. I'm free because he paid the price. He paid the price. I don't got to walk in religion no more and walk in this. No, I don't. I'm free in Christ. I am the righteousness of God. That is who I am. That is not what I do. You are a son and daughter of someone, right? Your parents. That's who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. You're still their son. You're still their daughter, right? 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 Those of you who have kids, like when they mess up and, and you know, do bad in school and stuff, you're not going to say, well, you're not my son anymore. <laughs> no, they're your son. They're your daughter. This is an identity. This is, this is a relationship. You, you, something happened. You can go to, thanks, Victoria. Can you go to Romans 8, verse 15? Something happened to you. Let's, let's talk about what happened to you to get you in this position that you are in. This is identity. Because when you know that you are righteous, you will be bold. You will come boldly to the throne room of God. You will come boldly into the presence of God and say, Jesus, I am here. This is, Father, help me. I'm your son. I am your daughter. I am right before you because of what you did for me. And this is what I ask. This is my petition. This is what I'm believing for. And there's no doubt. There's no fear because you know you're a son of God. 
You know that you are beloved. You know that you're in the, the family of God and that you have rights as a son and rights as a daughter. You have an inheritance in God. You can do all things through the Lord who strengthens you. You don't have to be afraid of death. You don't have to be afraid of fi finances, not work, work, you know, working out. You don't have to be afraid of man. There's nothing that you have to fear when you know God is before you and God is behind you and that you are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. And you walk in this confidence and you walk in this peace knowing that you are unstoppable. Not in a cocky, arrogant way, but there is a peace that you have in your life. There's a grace you have in your life. People are like, why are you so happy all the time? Why? This is like, what's going on? It has nothing to do with how my life has been looking this week. It has everything to do with my identity because I am righteous. Oh, yeah. Righteousness means, another, another way of saying righteous means is that you have the right to stand in the presence of God. Amen. You have the right to stand in the presence of God. Amen. Okay? You have the right now, okay? Yeah. Because of what Jesus did for you. The, the difference between the person that is in a wicked mindset and the person that is in the righteous identity, the wicked haven't received the fullness and the forgiveness of God. When people live in a wicked mindset, they haven't really received God's, Jesus' forgiveness. They haven't received what he did on the cross. And so they live like a wicked person. They think and they flee and they live in fear like a wicked person. But the righteous just receive what he did. That's all it is. It's just receiving what he did for you. That's what makes you righteous. You receive that he took your place on the cross, that he was sin to, to, so that, you know, and he took your sin on the cross so that you can be, you can stand in the presence of God, which is righteousness. Romans 8.15 says this. This is why if you guys can bring your Bibles. Who has a Bible? Who, who has a Bible? Bring your Bibles here. Um, when you do come to Purpose Place, if you need a Bible, look, look at the table right there. We got a bunch of Bibles right there. So make sure to grab one on the way out. Have that so you can have it during the week so you can grow in your time with the Lord. So when you come here, you, you just, this, is, this should just be confirmation to what God has already been showing you. Okay? When you come to church, it's just confirmation of what God has been speaking to you during the week. Okay? Because we all depend on him. We all have a relationship with him. Okay? All right? Amen. Romans 8.15 says this, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear which is interesting. You receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Everyone say Abba. Abba. Father. Father. In Hebrew, Abba is Father. You were adopted. It says that you received the adoption, the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. When I received Jesus, when I didn't call God Father growing up. I didn't, I didn't say, I just said God, okay? I know for certain people it's awkward to call God Father because of their experiences they've had with their earthly father. And it's awkward, it's an awkward place, it's a sensitive place. It's, we're not really comfortable to say Father, Dad, because it reminds us, it brings too much pain from the experiences that we've had with our earthly fathers. But something happened when I received Jesus and, I, and the Holy Spirit took, took residence in my life, in my heart. There was something that happened. There was a spirit that came upon me. It was a spirit of adoption because I used to say, God, God, God. And all of a sudden I started saying, Father, Father. You know, when someone gets adopted, you know, there's a spirit of adoption that comes upon them. Maybe when they bring the child in, you know, maybe at first they'll say, hey, Jim, you know, Sarah, you know, whatever the, whatever the people that have adopted them. But over the years, there's a spirit of adoption that takes place. And all of a sudden, the first moment they say, okay, dad, hey, mom. What's happening? There was a transformation happening in the spirit, right? Where now they're no longer just Sarah and, I forgot the other name that I said. Jim. It's not only, they're not only just Sarah and Jim. Now it becomes the spirit of adoption has come upon them. And now it's mom, it's dad. And that's what happens over time with him. You, you, you start not looking at him just as a God somewhere in the sky. Now it's dad. Because you know why? Because his spirit lives on the inside of you, bearing witness with your spirit. And all of a sudden, you know, you know, you know, not anyone can tell you anything wrong, that you know without a shadow of doubt you're his. Amen. And what happens is because you know you're his, you, you, you're able to know who you are. Because you don't find out who you are until you know whose you are. Okay? Right. When you understand whose you are, you understand who you are. You guys understand that? Amen. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to close it out. This is the fa my, favorite, my favorite part of the message today. We go to Matthew 14, verse 22. So it says, we're looking at Jesus. It says, immediately, focus on this, it's really good. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Everyone say other side. Other side. Today's message, we're talking about being stuck in the middle. 
all right, being stuck in the middle. Jesus makes his disciples go to the other side. God is calling you to go to the other side. Come over here with me, son. Come over here with me, daughter. Don't worry about what you've done. Don't let your past uh, suspend you. C come to me. Come to me. I love you. So they go to the other side. It says, while he sent the multitudes away, which is very, very important because spiritually what this means is, is that you don't have to worry about fighting your own problems. You don't have to worry about fighting your own problems and your own strength. Jesus will send the multitudes away in your life. If you allow Jesus to, to if, you just, if you focus on his love, you, his love will be the, the byproduct of that love is you'll see your life beginning to look more and more like the way he wants you to live. You see, the byproduct of a life being, when you understand you're righteous and you understand that he loves you, right, and you love him, what happens is the byproduct is holiness. The byproduct, the byproduct is holiness because you want to live for him. Holiness just means set apart for God. doesn't mean perfection. Okay? No one is perfect. Sorry to disappoint you. You ain't never going to be perfect. Just give that up. Yeah. Give that dream up. <laughs> just give it up. Flush it down the toilet. All my per perfectionists, just, just give it up. Okay? It's not going to happen. Okay? Holiness, the byproduct is holiness is being set apart. You see, my wife, when I fell in love with my wife, we got married. The byproduct of, of my uh, affection to her was my faithfulness. The byproduct is, is that I'm holy to her. I'm set apart for my wife. Because there's a relationship that we have that is strong, that, that, that I'm in love with her and she's in love with me. And, 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 and so because of that, the fruit of that is that I want to be faithful to her. I want to treat her right. I want to serve her. I'm not forced to do any of these things because I have free will. You have free will as well. But when you understand that you are in right standing with Jesus, that he loves you, that he died for you, that he's there for you, that he saved your life so many times you don't even know about it. OK, when he's come through, through for you time after time after time, when he's provided for you, when he's done all these things, when you've cried out and he's been there and he will always be there for you. What happens is the byproduct is, is that you want to be faithful to him. Yeah. You want to live for him. There's things in your life that have been bringing you down. And all of a sudden, this love affair starts happening with you and the father. And you just don't want to do it no more. Father, I'm tired of being unfaithful in this area. I'm tired of living this way. I don't want I want to give this up now because you're too good. That's the byproduct. There's nothing that forces you to have to do something. That's religion. Relationship is, I want, because you're so amazing, I want to live for you. I want to live for you, God, because you're amazing. That's righteousness. That's righteousness. So he sends the multitudes away, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, uh, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat, look at this was now in the middle. What happens when you're in a, a spiritual middle place? This is what happens when you're in a spiritually middle place. Look, look what's happening around the boat, okay? He's in a, he's, they're in the middle, tossed by the waves, for the wind was resisting them. The wind was contrary to where they wanted to go. The wind, the fear, the fear, the, the, the fear that you're dealing with, the fear of not adding up, the, you know, the fear of shame, whatever it is, is keeping you in a place. And so the boat cannot progress forward. The boat is in the middle. And this is what's happening in the middle. And we're about to see soon two different identities that, we're, that are gonna take place right before us that I've never seen before that God showed me. It's gonna be two different identities that we're gonna see. One is gonna be the wicked identity. The other is going to be the righteous identity. We're gonna see the disparity. We're gonna see how these two the, the intertwine and, and what takes place in our lives when we think and operate as a wicked person and what takes place in our life when we know we are righteous. Amen. Okay, this is what takes place. So, verse 25, it says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. I want, I want you to know right now, they've never seen Jesus do this before. This is a new thing. They've been with Jesus for a little bit now. They've never seen Jesus walk on water. I want you to know in this season, you're going to see God do things you've never seen before. You're going to see God do, God do things in your life that you've never seen before. I guarantee you. And the next three months, you're going to see God do, if you receive this, this is the Lord. And you have to receive it, though. In the next three months, you're going to see God do things in your life that you've never seen before, that you've never seen before. OK, that's why we can't put God in a box. We can't put God in a box. We don't know how he's going to come, which way he's going to do it. But just trust him. Just trust him. OK, so because they've never seen Jesus do this before, something happens to them. Verse 26, it says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for Fear. I'm going to say fear. fear. They got afraid. They got, they got afraid because 
And this is what happens when fear, when we allow fear to come in our life. Fear, fear blocked them from seeing it was Jesus. Fear blocked them from seeing an opportunity that was God. Fear will block you to miss on the God opportunities that come in your life. Because you're so in bondage, because you're so in the middle, because you're so in fear and not feeling worthy, even when God brings opportunities to you, you can't see it's God. And you sh what happens? You shy away from it and you flee. You go the opposite direction of the opportunities that God is bringing to you. Okay? So that's what happens. So it says, but immediately Jesus speaks to them because he's so amazing. And he says, be of good cheer, guys. It's, it's I. Don't, don't be afraid. And because God will always confirm that it is him. God will always confirm. He will always bring a confirmation that, that it's him. Amen. So even when opportunities come and you don't know and you get afraid because we all go through fear. We all feel the emotions of fear, right? Everyone goes through fear. We're not saying you're not going to ever be afraid. You go through fear, but even in the midst of feeling fear, God wants you to trust him. So he says, it's me, guys. It's me. It's me. I'm confirming that it is me. And Peter answered him and said, Lord. This is the part that I wrestled with this week. Okay, I looked at this. For like three days, four days in a row. I couldn't understand why. I've read this a hundred times, but I'm in a season where God is challenging me to look at the word differently. He wants you to look at the word differently. Some of you guys have looked at the Bible, you read scriptures, but he's challenging you to, to, to let him break it more for you in this season of your life. And so that's what I'm allowing God to do. I've seen this a million times. I've heard people preach it. But I, I said, God, I want to tell me, give, give me the meat of this. What is going on here? Why of all the things? Let me get ahead of myself. Who, what, so he says, what does Peter say? He says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, I've read this and I've heard this. Who's ever read, heard this story before? Who's heard this story before? Okay. Peter, out of all the guys in the boat, says, hey, Jesus, if it's you, Command me to come on the water. Now, the, I, you know, I've always read it like, oh, okay, cool. You know, Peter's going to walk on water. Jesus, I mean, Jesus walk, you know, it's like the story, you know what I mean? But this time I said, this is, I, had to, I, I brought myself in the reality on the boat. And if I'm on the boat and Peter's right next to me and we're all, we're all afraid, Jesus, we think it's a ghost, but Jesus said it's me. We're on the boat together. And Peter goes, Jesus, if it's you, come, command me. I'm, there's a storm going. The waves are going. The boat is rocking. Okay, we all think we're about to die. And Peter goes, if it's you, command me to come out to you. Huh? <laughs> what? Why in all the world, Peter, for a confirmation, that's the one you're going to go for? <laughs> but here's the deal. A few chapters before that, they, this is the second time they were in a storm. The first time they were in a storm, Jesus was sleeping. Jesus comes up. And he rebukes the storm and the storm stops. So if I'm Peter, if I'm going to ask for a confirmation, I'm going to be like, Jesus, if it's you, stop the storm. Stop the storm. <laughs> Why in the world would I ever think or dream or imagine me asking Jesus, if it's you, have me come out in the storm to you? Can you think about that for a second? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That makes no sense, right? What would possess Peter to ask that question? To, to, to go there for that confirmation, okay? I just had to really think about that. I'm like, this makes no, this makes no sense. But God set, this, God set this up to show you and I today the two differences between the wicked identity and the righteous identity. Because righteousness allows you to be what? No, say it again. Righteousness allows you to be bold. So these represent two different things. The people in the boat who are scared rocking, okay? They, they, just, trying to, they just trying to make it. <laughs> they just trying to survive, okay? They're just like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But here's the interesting thing, okay? Here's the interesting thing. Let's read this. So it says, <laughs> he says, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said, all right, if you're going to be bold and have an audacious prayer like that, well, come on forth. Come on forward. I'm waiting for bold prayers. God, Jesus is saying, I'm waiting for you to be bold today. I'm waiting for bold prayers today. Be bold. Don't be afraid. See, righteousness makes you bold. Come with it. What do you want God to do in your life? What are you believing for? What seems impossible for you today? Go for it. Nothing's too impossible for him. What are you holding back for? Go after it. Pray. God, I'm, I'm believing for this. I'm believing for that. Pray the most impossible prayer. T literally, he wants you to do that. Don't be afraid. Just do it. Be bold. Don't flee from it. Be bold. Peter gets it, right? So, so Jesus said, all right, come. <laughs> cool. And when Peter had come down off the boat, he walked in the water to go to Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. Righteousness means you have the right to stand in the presence of God. Righteousness means you have the right to stand 
in the presence of Jesus. That's what, that's what righteousness means, right? So Peter comes off the boat to demonstrate what righteousness looks like, okay? He comes, he's walking on the water, which is very supernatural, obviously, no one's ever done that before. And he comes to stand right next to Jesus, which is right standing with Jesus, which shows you and I what a righteous person looks like. Do you guys get that? Amen. You guys get that, okay? Amen. So he comes and he stands in the presence of God. Now this, this is what happens next, to confirm what I'm saying, if you don't believe me, because ain't nobody agreed, it's fine. Um, <laughs> people are like, oh, I guess. Um, <laughs> all, right, all right, okay, let's, let's go here, okay. So what happens, what happens to him? So it says, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. afraid. Because look, we all go through fear, okay? We all go through fear. We all, we all go through fear, right? He was afraid, and he was beginning to sink, and he cried out saying, Lord, save me. This represents anyone who is righteous, anyone who is righteous that, that makes mistakes, anybody who is righteous that falls. Because there's a scripture in Proverbs 24 that says the righteous, a righteous person falls seven times, but what do they do? Get back up. What do they do? They get back up. Righteousness means even when you make mistakes, you get back up. You get back up. And so this is what Jesus is saying. This is what Jesus is doing. So Peter is falling. And immediately, Jesus stretches out his hand, which means Peter walked quite a bit. Peter made it to him. Okay, we just, we kind of just gloss over that. Like, Peter was walking on water. He was like, hey, Jesus. <laughs> you know, we just think he was like, no, he was bold. He was like walking on water. Okay? He got so close to Jesus that Jesus just did this. Jesus didn't have to go, Peter. <laughs> he got so close to Peter. He just did this. He was right there next to Jesus. He came and stood right next to Jesus. But when he came and stood right next to Jesus, exercising his righteousness, he begins to fall. As he's falling, he actually perfects what righteousness really is. Because Jesus stretches out his hand and helps Peter back and this is what I believe Jesus did in that moment. Because Jesus is a teacher. He's a father. And every situation that we fall into, every single situation that we fall into mess with, he uses that as a teaching moment. <laughs> a teaching moment. Okay, he uses that as a teaching moment. This is what I believe, okay? Can I just tell you what I believe? Let me tell you what I believe. Let me tell you what I believe happened after this. Okay, because this is the God that I know. This is the father I know. He's like this with me. Maybe he's like this with you. I'm sure he is because he's the same, right? This is what he does with Peter. He helps Peter back up. And we just kind of like, just turn the page. Like, they still weren't at the boat. The boat was in the middle. So that means together. All right, Peter, you ready? Let's do this. They walked back to the boat. And they got in the boat. They walked back to the boat. Peter walked back to the boat. He didn't fail. He fell. Jesus helped him up. You a little faith. Now it's time to get back on the horse. You ready? You fell. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Jesus is saying, when you're in right standing with me, you're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. But the righteous get back up. And, when I, and, and he helps you get back up. You don't, he didn't get back up on him, by himself. He didn't go... <laughs> Jesus reached down into his mess and into his dirt and pulled them back up. That's what God is saying to you, that he's reaching down in your mess. He's reaching down in the things you're going through, and he's helping you do it together. If you don't know how you're going to get free of this addiction, if you don't know how you're going to get out of this relationship, if you don't know how you're going to make it and be successful in business or, or, or whatever that's happening with your family, Jesus is saying, you don't have to do it on your own. I'm going to help you get back up. I'm going to pull you back up out of the mess. I'm going to pull you back up out of that. And then we're going to walk and we're going to do the things that you messed up the first time. You messed up the first time. You may even messed up the second time. Hey, you, you may even messed up seven times. But I guarantee you at one point we're going to walk this thing out together. We're going to walk this thing back together. The wicked people, unfortunately, were in this boat. And when I say wicked, obviously, I mean as an identity. They're not bad people but they didn't know who they were. And so because they were in this boat, they missed out on the great things that God wanted to do. They could all came out the boat. They all could have been like, hey, Jesus. Peter could be like, call me. And then they could have been like, all right, let's go too. But they, they chose to stay there 
because they were afraid because they didn't understand that being in right standing with Jesus means that you have nothing to worry about if you're going out to Jesus. If you're going out to Jesus in the storm, it doesn't matter who's coming at you. It doesn't matter who's coming behind you. You can go into a war zone, but if Jesus is there and Jesus says, come, you have nothing to fear. The road is clear. It doesn't matter how dangerous the situation is. It doesn't matter where you have to go, what he's calling you to do. When Jesus says, come to me, I guarantee you, you need to just run. You got nothing to fear. Oh, I don't have the money. Come. Oh, I don't know. I don't know enough people. Come, Lord. Uh, I mean, I'm not even. At, I don't have a college degree. Come. If I've given you that word, come to me boldly. You have nothing to worry about. But get out of that boat. You can die in that boat. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being stuck in the middle. I'm tired of being stuck in the middle. We have a God who is amazing. We have a God who is all powerful, and He's saying to you, it is time to come out of the middle and come to the place where I've called you to be. Amen. 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 I'm going to close out with this. This is James 1.8. You guys can stand up. James 1.8. Now, James obviously heard the story. This is the half-brother of Jesus, historians say. The half-brother of Jesus wrote this. So I'll just read it from verse 6. James 1 verse 6. I'm going to close it out with this. Jesus, uh, James heard of this storm. James heard of this situation. And this is what James is saying what happens to us. He says, but let him ask in faith. Everyone say faith. faith. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So James is bringing back this situation with the boys in the boat. And he's saying, this is what it's like to have a double mind. Let's go back to this. So he says, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded. Everyone say double-minded unstable in all of his ways because when you are double-minded and you're in the middle and you think you're not worthy but on this side there's God's love is here but this side you're unworthy and this side is God's love here it says that you're unstable in all of your ways and you're in the middle being tossed by the waves and so right now let's just pray father we just thank you put your hands up just receive his love right now I just want you to say father I receive your love and on this day forward, I assume my identity in Jesus' name. My identity is that I am in right standing with you because you died for me. You paid for all my sins. Yesterday, today, and forever. And because of that, I am righteous. I am good enough. I am worthy. I am more than enough. I am a conqueror because you love me. In Jesus' name, baptize me with a fresh anointing from your spirit so I can do the impossible and step out of the boat and boldly come to you walking on water in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Yes, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Purpose Place Church. And also, you guys can catch us on Instagram. We go live every Sunday yes. morning at 11 a.m. Yes, hey, we got a new video coming out every single week. We'll see you soon.